Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Gold Mind. I'm Casey Bell, your host, and it is time for Business Assistant. If you are in business and you're looking for some phone services for your business, let's talk about Trusta. Trusta's easy to use web and mobile apps let you call, let you use your business phone number on any device and give you the tools you need to manage calls. So what exactly do they do? So with Trusta, you can make and receive unlimited calls from your Trusta phone number. Show your Trusta number as your caller ID so that your personal number stays private and you can sync your existing contacts with Trusta to make the transition easy and hassle free. You can also, with texting, send and receive unlimited text messages on your business number. You can send and receive photos and videos. Take advantage of texting on your toll-free phone numbers as well. And you can also manage welcome and direct callers with a professional sound and custom reading. You can route calls based on the day of week and time of day with schedules. Get callers to the right place with IVR menus and auto attendance and deliver calls to departments, individuals, or voicemail boxes. There is so much more, and of course, their pricing determines on which plan you get. For more information, you can go to Trusta.com. They have a 30-day free trial. You can call 844-TO-TRUSTA, or like I said, you can just go to Trusta.com. That is it for the business assistant. Please don't go anywhere. My interview with Erwin Strohmeyer is coming up right after this message. So treating my studio with what uh, Sterile Space has provided with me is actually very important in my industry because we have a lot of different students and a lot of different clients and safety is our number one concern, especially with health. Uh, so in martial arts, you know, we deal with a lot of uh, target practice and a lot of different equipment that gets handled by different people every day. And so in order to make sure that it's safe to use, we need to make sure it's sterile. And also, you know, germicides are used to make sure it's uh, not spreading any germs or diseases. And sterile space definitely provided that reassurance. And also, we saw that they had past history and data about lowering um, infectious diseases in facilities that they uh, treated. So we were definitely comfortable and confident that it was the right company for us. Hi, and welcome back to The Gold Mine. Up next is my interview with Erwin Strohmeyer. He is the owner of Sterile Space Infection Defense, which is a business that helps keep your office or your business clean during, especially during this time, the pandemic. He shares with us some advice on how you can keep your business and your employees and your customers safe during this time. Let's take a listen. All right, so let's start. What are some things business can do during the pandemic? Well, they can follow the professional guidelines put out by the doctors who know what they're talking about, which is, of course, require masks at all times, okay? Uh, wash your hands or use hand sanitizer quite often because you're constantly touching surfaces that have germs on them. And even if you've got a mask on, you can still touch your eyes or occasionally touch your nose and get germs into you very easily that way. And of course, watch your distance in between people. If anybody's sneezing around you or coughing around you, then you should try and avoid those people or send them home from work if you can. Okay. Um, name some tips employers and managers can do to deal with um, employees that are not very cooperative with the, you know, masks and distance and things of that nature. Well, a lot of people seem to take the position they shouldn't be told what to do. The government shouldn't be telling them to wear masks or whatever. It's taking away their, their freedoms, their religious liberties, whatever. That's all a bunch of garbage, okay? In the workplace, if you're there, you want people to keep you safe and they expect you to keep them safe. So if an employer has an employee that is being difficult about it, okay? If he wants to keep the employee and the employee has the ability to work from home, then that's what they should do if they don't wanna wear a mask in the office and that they don't wanna follow the appropriate safety guidelines. Um, either that or terminate them. Uh, the, the health and well, well-being 
of your other employees and their families far outweighs the value that any one individual can bring to the organization in 99.9% .9 of the cases. Okay, so I would say that if employees are not willing to uh, follow, follow the, the suggestions of the medical experts in trying to keep themselves and their fellow coworkers safe, then they gotta go. Okay, and okay. you're- Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, as far as some of the other things that, that the, the uh, employers can do is they can keep plenty of, of hand sanitizer stations around. Uh, they can provide uh, their employees, you know, maybe with um, disinfectant wipes for their desks, things of that nature. Okay. So you mentioned in your, um, on your website, keeping the business biological um, clean. Is that something employers should research on how to do, or is it more safer to outsource that cleaning? Well, <clears throat> I look at it this way. First of all, I'm the son of a physician. So I look at things a little bit differently than probably you do, unless one of your parents was a doctor. But that being said, um, you, you can do a lot of things on your own, okay? You can, you can clean halfway decently. You know how to spray disinfectant, and that's all well and great. But it's not what you do. And the answer is not necessarily a cleaning company either. You want to outsource to someone who is experienced and knowledgeable in public infection control, which is very, not very different, but much more tedious than hospital infection control, okay? And so what they should do is that they should outsource to an expert. I mean, look, if they were going to, you know, renovate the inside of their offices, they wouldn't tell the sales team to bring their hammers in on Saturday, they'd hire a contractor, or if it was lease space, the landlord would hire a contractor, okay? Um, if, they, if they wanted to redo you know, anything else or, or build an addition, you know, same thing. You, you hire the expert to do it. And, and the thing is, so many of us have not learned really anything about how to keep germs at bay in today's situation. For over a hundred years, we were taught clean with a cleaner and spray some disinfectant and you're pretty good, okay? The problem is starting a long time ago, and, and not just because of COVID, okay, but starting a long time ago, doctors used to, not, in, not for the wrong reasons, but for the right reasons, um, prescribe antibiotics because they didn't know if it was a viral or a bacterial infection, okay? And that's how adaptive organisms like MRSA and vancomycin-resistant enterococcus and things like that came to be. They, they adapted to those drugs so that they wouldn't affect them anymore, all right? So the thing is, we, don't, we, we as people don't really know more than, you know, wash your hands before dinner, wash your hands after using the bathroom, okay, and, um, you know, do everything you can to, to try and keep the place clean. And that's important. But there are other steps that can be done that professionals like myself do, okay, that give you a much greater level of biological cleanliness and safety than just cleaning and disinfecting. Because let me ask you a question. If I said to you, Casey, go on the internet and research the best disinfectant you can find. I don't care what it costs, I'll pay for it on me. And then I say, okay, now spray that countertop with it. How long is it gonna keep killing germs? An hour, a day, a week, or a month, the best one in the world, what would your guess be? An hour? No. No, okay. When a disinfectant dries, it's gone. And most people don't even use disinfectants properly, which is really a big problem. They take a can of whatever, you know, Lysol or any other commercial brand, and they, they missed the surface. They see a little mist on the surface. They think they did their job. The problem is if you look at any brand of disinfectant, especially liquid-based, okay, somewhere on the label, third or fourth paragraph, it'll probably say, surface must remain visibly wet for X number of minutes. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, what is the definition of visibly wet? Not where you misted it and it evaporates in 10 seconds. You have to flood the surface, almost look, make it look like you knocked over, but it's got to look visibly wet, like you spilled water or something. And the thing is to do that, even in your home, 
and especially in an office, most of those things don't smell that great anyway, okay? And by flooding the surface, you create a lot of other problems. A, if anybody touches it and touches their face, it could burn their eyes, it could burn their mucosa, whatever, okay? But it'll leave a horrible odor around for quite a while and it will not be fun to sit in that area and try and work. So what you wanna do is you want to have an infection control program or protocol for your workspace where your employees are, where they really don't have to focus too hard on keeping their surfaces clean and using a disinfectant wipe or spraying disinfectants. You, you really want to have your space be as biologically clean with a minimum amount of effort. And that's what experts like myself do. So, you know, it's, it's always, look, you, you, you're not gonna go to an electrician for a neurological problem, okay? Yeah, those, both of them will work with electrical, but it's very different. Right. So with that said, tell us about your business, Sterile Space Infection Defense, um, exactly what you offer. Okay. So I started this company back in the early part of 2013. And uh, my father, may he rest in peace, who is a dermatologist, a doctor who knows, knew, I should say, a lot about infection and stuff. Um, I looked, he was towards the tail end of his life and he was suffering from infection. So it became of significant interest to me. And I looked into a lot of different things and a colleague of mine turned me on to this idea of antimicrobial germ killing coatings. And so I looked into it and, and what it was, it, it's a very unique science. It was actually developed over 50 years ago by a company called Dow Corning or what is now known as Dow Chemical. I'm sure you've probably heard of them. And what it is, is it's a coating that, that bonds to a surface and damages newly deposited microbes so badly that survival and thriving and colonizing are next to impos impossible. So you're drastically reducing the germ load on your surfaces. So what I did was I started a business that was based on spraying alone and very quickly found there's a lot more to public infection control than just spraying a disinfectant, which is what most companies do. We actually do deep surface decontamination, ter extensive terminal de uh, disinfection, and the antimicrobial coating, which is the icing on the cake. Because everybody and their brother, as soon as somebody said pandemic back in March, every little you know mom and pop cleaning service, all the way up to the big franchise companies, oh, COVID cleaning and disinfection, COVID, you know, this, that, and the next thing. And the problem is they're cleaning, which is a good thing. And they're disinfecting, which is a good thing. But by the time they pack up their stuff and they're out the door, that disinfectant is dried. And yes, the surfaces are clean and the surfaces are germ-free for the moment. And that's the critical part of it, the moment. Because the first person to walk by a surface that's been cleaned and disinfected and either coughs, sneezes, or touches, that surface has now left microbes behind, some living, some not, but the ones that are living will thrive and colonize that surface. And when you take into account that the average cell, plant, animal, or human goes through what's called mitosis, which is when one cell becomes two, okay? Um, they, they basically go through mitosis around every 20 or so minutes. So a single cell of anything, and let's just call it something simple like E. coli, okay? in an eight hour work period be can become literally millions and millions and millions of cells and colonize a surface. So that even though where that one microbe landed is a dangerous spot, now that it's colonized a surface or started to colonize a surface, there's a lot more for the next person who touches that surface to pick up. And as soon as they do this or this or this, they have a high probability of introducing that pathogen into their system where it will have warmth, moisture, a food source, and a friendly surface. And then it colonizes your system. That's how you get sick. And that's why all of a sudden, in most cases, you develop a fever because a fever is the immune system's way of trying to raise the temperature to kill whatever that microbe is, okay? And that's also when your body ramps up white blood cell count to try and fight it that way as well. But we started the business, like I said, back towards the end of 13, uh, after doing 
about four or five months of um, due diligence to see if it was really anything that was even plausible. And the one thing that dear old dad said was, is if this stuff really does what they say it does, we needed it about 20, 30 years ago. Because, you know, it just, it makes, if you can reduce the volume of germs on the surfaces, even in your own house, okay, you're sharing far fewer germs, you have far fewer opportunities to get sick. And the whole idea is to keep, you know, we can't get rid of all germs because we need to be exposed to germs to some extent to build our immune system. Okay, because each time we get sick with a new pathogen, our system learns so that the next time it kind of sees that, it will ramp everything up a lot more quickly to try and kill it. Kind of like what's behind the idea of the vaccines for COVID right now, okay, where they're using a potential marker from a strand of COVID, okay, to kind of show it to your immune system, even though it won't give you the illness and make you ill, it will cause your body to say, hey, wait a minute. This doesn't look like it belongs here. Attack. So that's what the what they talk about when they're talking about vaccines. They're trying to give you something that will teach your system what to look for and attack as early as possible. So even though we don't deal with, with medications or drugs, we just deal with deep decontamination, terminal disinfection, and antimicrobial coating. Our clients and a lot of our clients, because we started in the childcare field have written to us over the years saying, ever since we've been using your Healthy Child Zone program, we've noticed a significant reduction in illnesses in student and staff, okay? Um, some of my clients have quoted percentages of 50 to 70% reduction in illnesses. And if you think of how, how often kids get sick at childcare, that's a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So, and by using the same exact process, we can provide the same level of biological cleanliness to any facility. And we don't work with hospitals, so that's why we call it public infection control. Okay, awesome. All right, so just some questions somewhat off the topic, some entrepreneurial questions. Um, what challenges or and or fears did you face when you first started your business? When I first started this business or any business in general? Um, when you first started, um, were you raised in entrepreneurship? Did you start out already with the mind of an entrepreneur? Or were you more, well, you had I, to learn it? I would say, yeah, you're probably right with that because um, I think it was when I was 15, I was riding around on my bicycle to pharmacies to pick up black and white film to process and print and try and get some of Kodak's money in my pocket. <laughs> so yeah, I've been doing a lot of my own work ever since I was very young. Um, I've been in the printing industry, I've been in advertising, I've, uh, I've been in the disaster restoration industry. Uh, so I have, I've worked for other people far less than I've worked for myself. Because, you know, some people say when you're working for somebody else, you're making them rich. Well, that may be true, but only if you have knowledge from reading or going to school or whatever about business, you know, should you try and, get, try and get into running your own business? There are a lot of things that people don't realize all of a sudden, oh my God, I got to do this, I got to do that. I, gotta, I didn't realize, you know, they think it's just go do, get paid and put it in your pocket. And if you do that long enough, the nice people at Internal Revenue will come over and say, by the way, some of that belongs to us, including interest penalties and taxes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if you're going to be an entrepreneur or if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, either read some good publications first or, or attend a few, you know, good virtual entrepreneurial conferences. Um, but just remember, pay yourself first, okay? Because if you're busy doing things and you gotta make sure you're making enough money to pay yourself first and then be able to pay all the bills, okay? Because believe it or not, very quickly, there will be a multitude of different bills, all right? So basically read and get as much education on it as you can. And there are lots of good resources out there. Okay, you basically answered my next question. So I'm gonna to go to the last one. Do you have any sound advice to the employer who can't seem to stop panicking during this time? <sighs> um, a bottle of tequila and a straw? <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> Although there are days that I feel like that too, but um, you know, different businesses and, and, and their owners are going to face 
similar but different challenges depending on the type of business they are. An example, if you own a restaurant, most restaurateurs I know are, are like at their wits end. A, a good friend of mine owns a restaurant across the street from where I live and it's in a hotel. And because the hotel's business is down, because you're not allowed to have parties of X size or above and all that. And people's fears in general. I mean, a lot of people are still afraid to go out and go interact with people. But, you know, if you're a restaurateur, you're wondering, okay, how soon is the next customer coming through the door? Now, for him, I went in and did a process in his place of business to try and help him called the Healthy Dining Zone Program, where we go in and we do what we do, and we give them all the marketing materials they need, all right? And I tell them, keep, you know, pumping it out there. It's the healthiest place in town to eat, okay? It's the safest place in town to eat because it's a healthy dining zone facility. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in office, a lot of offices, people can still work remotely, which I think is really going to kill commercial real estate, but that's a whole different story. And for those people, they've been charging too much from the beginning. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you have something like a gym, I know several gyms being nervous about clients not coming in because of the pandemic. They've started um, either uh, like Zoom training, okay, or going to their home as one person with proper protective equipment on and training them at their homes because they don't want to come out of their homes. But it really depends on the business. And unfortunately, a certain number of industries and the volume of businesses in those industries are probably going to be forced out only because of the pandemic and how unfortunately we didn't get the proper type of guidance from the very beginning. And I don't want to get into political issues, but unfortunately that's what it becomes. And uh, so what I would say to, to small business owners is try to think outside the box. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't think like landscapers are not going to have a lot of loss of business. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're outside. They don't come into your home. You don't have to go into their business to use them. Okay. But I think, uh, I, well, an example, Apple computer. I mean, I, I, I live in, uh, in North Jersey and I go normally to the Willowbrook mall Apple store and, and that store has been open and closed several times just to keep exposure to their employees down. But, you know, I, I think make the brick and mortar places are going to suffer the most ones that you have to go into. So like food establishments, um, things like maybe jewelry stores and stuff. Cause you know, I mean, what you can always do if, if it's a product based store and not a food based business, okay. Where you would go and eat, you can at least reach out to your customers and say, Hey, okay, I know we're in a bad way now. And with this, with this pandemic, you don't want to wander out. You don't want to be around other people. Totally understandable. But what we'd like to do is if you want to come in and go shopping for, you know, a present presents for the holidays for your loved ones at our store, call us and make an appointment. You will be the only one in the store. All the proper protective measures have been taken and you can do your holiday shopping for the items that you want from us in absolute safe environment. That's the kinds of things. I mean, granted, restaurants have been placing tables six to 10 feet apart. They have hand sanitizer on every table. But the thing is that, you know, you still, I mean, I went to a diner the other day and it was every other booth was open and the booths that were open had very high plastic shields. But then again, if the governor decides no more indoor dining for the next two months, that's not really going to help them much. You know, I mean, granted, takeout has gone through the ceiling. Okay. Or, or food delivery has gone through the ceiling. I'm sure, um, Uber Eats and, and DoorDash, and I, I forget what the other one is, but they're, they're probably driving all over hell's half acre like there's no tomorrow delivering food. Um, but it's, it's gonna be difficult for a while, unfortunately. And as the doctors on television have been saying, the medical experts that we should have been listening to all along have been saying, um, the holidays are gonna be a real zinger for us because a lot of people travel that sh really should not have, but I understand it. You don't know if you're ever gonna see that family member again. And believe me, I know, I know how they feel, but there's probably gonna be another big spike if, if not 
between Christmas and New Year's, probably in the beginning of January. And it's kind of scary if you watch the news because they're talking about next to no ICU beds going to be left and building emergency field hospitals and parks and stuff like that or in convention centers. I mean, the sad thing is about this whole thing is that, like I said earlier, it was politicized and that never should have happened because this is a public health issue. And I think, or at least I hope, those people who are taking this seriously will realize that it is a serious situation. They should listen to the experts. And although it could hurt financially for quite a while, it's pretty much better than having lifelong disabilities from this disease or being killed by it. I'm Erwin Strohmeyer from Sterile Space Infection Defense. You can reach me at 973-714-8288, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, I still do sleep sometimes. Um, and you can go to our website at www.sterilespace, as one word, .com. And there's lots of good information there. I want to thank you for watching all the way through. I greatly appreciate you tuning in to this episode of The Gold Mind. Of course, I would like to also thank my wonderful guest, Iron Strohmeyer. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and if you'd like to be a part of the show, go to the link kcsbtv.weebly.com. It's in the description. And if you need more information on Erwin Strohmeyer, his information is in the description as well. Thank you once again for watching. Have a great day.